the average for a realtor's gross is actually very low. We have this duty to our clients, right? To best inform them, to give them the right recommendations. And it's just, if we're not informed, we got to go out and seek that information, right? But going back to the whole reason why I got into real estate, I was like, you know, but I want to help people. We went from being really comfortable living in an apartment, right? To all of a sudden, it's like, there's no money. It was tough to see that, you know, weekend rolled around and it's like all we can afford was really a $5 pizza. In understanding my client, I also have to understand their ability, right? So it's like with that, I'll be able to better connect them to the product. Take the risk, obviously calculated risk, right? All right, what's going on, family? Marvic Productions, uh, welcome everybody that's watching. Thank you to uh, the audience that we have on our pl on all platforms. Uh, we're very excited to be doing episode 18. Yes, 18, sir. 18. We're just uh, we're gonna see how far we can get in this podcast world. Uh, mm -hmm. Victor, how you doing, bro? Doing great, man. Got uh, the all black on. Yes, sir. You didn't get the memo today, but I didn't. I missed the memo. Black. I missed the memo. You know they say um, closers wear black. Studs wear black, and that's how you know you're just a killer, man. All black. Okay, there we go. That's, <laughs> that's the first time I hear that one, but yeah. uh, we'll go with it. Yeah. But, uh, 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 Clifton's in the background saying he's black. We know. You we know, know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, we have a very special guest today. Um, we've got, I believe you're going to be our third female guest. We haven't had too many. I was telling you oh, this yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're very excited to get more mm -hmm. females on Marvick Productions and there's a ton of females out there. Successful females yeah. as well. Yeah. Successful yeah. females, exactly, that are killing it, you know, in business. And uh, right. we're excited to hear about, you know, her story today. Um, she goes by Yareth Gomez. Let's Welcome. Thank Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Repeat yes. that again for, for the people that mispronounce it's it. It's not Yareth. It's not Yareth. It's Yadith. <laughs> Yadith. All right, let's go. How are you, Yadith? How are you doing? Doing great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. And thank yeah. you for having me on. So it's 18. Yeah. It's You're legal now, right? <laughs> 18. We're right, official now. We can't show. drink yet, yes. but we're legal. Right. Yes. Yes. Can you yes. buy cigarettes at 18 still? Yeah, I believe yeah? you can. Okay. I yeah. think yeah. so. I think so. I've yeah. never, I don't dabble. I'm no? clean. I've never smoked. <laughs> I've yeah. never drank. Not a tobacco person. No, I'll kidding. do a cigar here and there on vacation. Okay. That's tasteful. I feel like a boss. You just... <laughs> have you have you done a podcast before? You know, this is going to be the first. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank what, you. What made you, uh, you know, give Marvick Productions the opportunity to, you know, <laughs> be yeah. the first? I mean, honestly, I'm going to be quite frank. I, I've been tuning in with you guys since the beginning. And yeah. really? I enjoy that, you know. It's it's so professional, uh -huh. right? I, when I, when I first saw the snippets, I was like, "Wow, this podcast seems like it's been around for for a while, uh, right?" Oh, sweet. Nothing, um, you know, nothing different than all those podcasts that I see that have been around for multiple years. Joe Rogan, right? right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so the ones that get the millions of views. <laughs> Rogan, you know. No, but honestly, Valley guys, yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you guys are up there with the with the Tates, right? Right. 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 Take it. Um, with with Patrick but David. That's Patrick but David. Oh, the yeah. Valley Yeah. yeah. That, uh, Tate's a whole different shout topic. out to PBD. I'll, I'll text you later. <laughs> just Sorry. a matter of time. Just right, a matter right. of time. Yes. No, I feel like we're on the right track. And obviously, uh, by, you know, every interview we get better and we meet great more people like yourself that are just sharp. And th that's what this is all about. You know, being able to give you guys a platform and give ourselves a platform where we could just share our mindsets and what helped us get where we're at today. So right, yeah, looking yeah. forward to hearing your story. Um, yeah. And on that note, I mean, shout out to our team. Mm -hmm. um, we do have an amazing editing team that. Um, just to be transparent, like we just, our job is really the conversation, you know, mm -hmm. finding right. the guests, you know, having that, that great combo, but we don't do any of the editing. Right. Like, Lord knows, like, I don't even know how to start yeah. any of that. And we, we yeah. yeah, we definitely have a great team behind us and obviously they make us look pretty and, and okay. make us sound great. Pretty but much. on that note, um, <laughs> anybody that, and I'm just going to throw this out there, Please, anybody bro. who, um, does content. Uh, but doesn't have the time because obviously it's very time consuming to do the editing. Hit us up. We'll send it over to our team and we'll make sure to take care of you guys at, at the fraction of the price that it will cost you in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. To just add on a little bit more is um, Marvick Productions. We are launching an editing, uh, you know, system mm -hmm. where exactly what he said, people like, you know, maybe at F and I know a lot of real estate people in mm -hmm. particular, you guys are very good at that, by the, by the way, like marketing yourselves and you. you guys are advanced with the drones and all that. I really like that, but, um, it's expensive here in the States, not saying it's not worth it, but 
what Victor is saying is uh, we, we do it on the low. Mm-hmm. So our team is not in the States. I won't reveal where our team is. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're, they, you've seen our quality. It's great. You said you it yourself. Yes. You compared it to Joe Rogan. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. It can't get any better. You know, right, so right. Yeah, um, shout out to our team, though, for doing that. And like mm-hmm. Victor said, if you guys are interested, if you guys have D- the camera, DMs. the mics, but you don't know how to edit it, just contact us and, yeah. you know, we'll we'll do our best to help you. And to piggyback on that, um, one thing that, that we want to do as well is obviously uh, anybody that wants to start a podcast but doesn't have the equipment for it. We're looking to rent it out f- to you guys as well, where you guys could, uh, you know, do your podcast, and we'll be supplying the uh, the equipment for you guys soon. That part mm-hmm. is soon. We're right, right. That's in the that's the in the works first. Yeah, the, yeah. the equipment a little bit later, but Bro, we just got to throw it out there. We'll right throw it. Now. Yeah, we're planting yeah. seeds. We're planting seeds. <laughs> but um, enough of us. Yeah, yeah. Let's go great. back to our guest, Yadet. So Yadet, um, uh, sorry to cut you off there. Um, what city did you grow up in? So I grew up in Montebello. Okay. Right? Shout out I Montebello. Currently. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're a fellow Montebello. Yeah, yeah. Shore High School. Yeah, resident. I think we're rivals there. Oilers and what, Spartans? Right, yes. Ooh. Did you play sports? At uh, sure? No. So I only went to Shore my senior year of high school. Oh, uh, okay. By that time, I was done with sports. I'm oh, like, yeah, yeah, I got to yeah. graduate. Focus. You're done. Uh, that yeah. senior year, you know, you're just cruising but by. But, you know, there, there's that there's that rivalry there when it comes to, you know, football, the high school football team. Definitely. Yeah, was, there I definitely was, is. Big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so – um. Born East Los Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. Raised predominantly Montebello. I okay. uh, reside in Pico right now, Pico mm-hmm. Rivera. Um, and yeah, I'm going back towards Montebello again. Just bought a house there. So nice. Montebello tends to, thank you. Your yeah. first home, I assume. Yes, nice. yeah, first home alone. So definitely nice, um, nice. a proud, exciting moment. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's nice. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like Montebello feels like home, of course, right. down the road. Um, you know, plans are to buy elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I'd love to be out in Pasadena, right? Oh, love Pasadena. Is that the yes. dream? Yeah, nice that's, you know, a couple years, yeah. It's very steps. nice. I've that's driven really through nice. there. Yeah. Actually, I remember. With, uh, mm-hmm. We the, went to go eat, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, uh, ah, definitely. It's, it's very a beautiful nice drive, yeah. Yes, yeah. but yeah. Montevallo is a great starting point. Not going to come Right, yeah, no, yeah. congrats yeah. on being a homeowner, you know, Thank especially you. In, in this today's economy. It's very expensive, and interest rates are pretty high. Yeah. But, um, you know, anybody that's, that's able to do that, you know, congrats to them and uh, pat on the back there. Our, our guest uh, last week, he actually just bought his first home, too. I was telling you a little right. bit about him. Yeah, how it would have been great. Yeah, it, yeah, it would have been good. We can always run it back. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, one of the things he was touching on towards the end of, you know, him sharing his idea or whatever was um, that he wished that he would have gotten, like, some lawyers involved to help him, uh-huh. like, read his contract. Like, just to kind of give you a little snippet, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this from what I remember. So he bought a... Duplex or Tri- triplex? The triplex. He yeah. brought. He bought a triplex in East LA. Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights. Mm-hmm. And uh, long story short, um, he wants to live there, but because of the laws, some kind of the tenant laws, like right. he can't kick out. Like there's only he, he. There's rules to who he can kick out and who has to stay. Right. He didn't know about that, mm-hmm. and he just got like bombarded with that news and. You know, so he has to make adjustments, but is that yeah. something you're aware of? Like yeah, all that kind of that's stuff? That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. So there's uh, rent control, mm-hmm. right? And right. then there's a specific one called um, RSO, mm-hmm. Rent Stabilization Ordinance, right? And that one, mm-hmm. um, your tenants are very protected, right? So most of LA City mm-hmm. um, falls under that category, mm-hmm. right? And what happens is that if you, the tenant has been in the home for more than three years, mm-hmm. Technically, they're entitled to anywhere between like twelve to twenty six thousand. Right, right. that's a range to kick them out. Right. Correct so me if I'm wrong, but he said he paid nineteen thousand to get one of the tenants yeah. out. Yeah, but they right. still they're still there. <laughs> oh no! Like but that. it's a mixy situation, I guess, because it's Boyle Heights. Uh, he talked about something about it being very backed. Up, uh, do you remember the the name of that? What? No, no, I don't. I don't um, recall. But I'm just, I'm just like bothered by um just the idea that if i buy a house and there's a tenant there like bro you gotta go it's my (laughs) house like why do i have to pay why can you help me understand that a little bit i don't know you know what's your perspective on that yeah you know and and it's ridiculous i'm gonna be Mm -hmm. quite frank okay so you're you're on the side of like you don't agree with that i completely agree is that just a california thing by the way that is i mean la is probably as strict as it gets Mm -hmm. with tenant rights right Mm -hmm. tenants have a whole lot of rights in los angeles and of course there's friendlier um there's friendlier states right Mm -hmm. for or landlords. Gotcha. So we call them landlord friendly states, right? And California gets pretty tough. Okay. Um, I've heard, I've heard. Yeah. So explain it's to, in yeah, explain to us why. Right. You know, I wish I knew why, but it's just 
I mean, it's That's just how it is. It's just protection that that tenants have. And it got very, um, you know, it just it got way worse during COVID. Mm. Right. During COVID, you had forbearance. Right. So, I mean, some landlords, some landlords also weren't making their mortgage payments. So mm. they were OK with their tenants, maybe not making the mortgage payments. But as soon as that ended, you know, landlords were responsible for paying right. every all their past payments. Right. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, how Jesus. do you Did make you your tenant follow suit? Did you see a lot of people lose their homes after COVID? You know, um, we're starting to see the aftermath of that now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm focusing um, my business. I'm gearing it more towards pre foreclosures, Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be quite honest with you. It's 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 sad, right? Right. Because I'm seeing that a lot of people, you know, the state programs, all these different programs, made it so easy for them to just don't make your payments, right? Mm -hmm. And then what ended up happening? It's the aftermath of it. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, it's like they owe too much mm-hmm. and they can't make those payments. They come knocking, knocking on their door, and they're like, "Hey, payments too. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to pay it, or or we're going to auction your home, right?" Dang, just so. like Shit. that, huh? Mm-hmm. How do you do? You feel, and this just, I'd like your opinion on okay. this. Um, do you feel like tenants have more rights than homeowners here in California? What's Definitely, really. That yeah. sucks. It does, right? I mean, no. I, I mean, we we were all tenants. At, we were all tenants at some point, and of course, I think we should have rights, or they should have rights, but not more. I, that's just yeah. I just when I heard that from him, it was just mm-hmm. bothersome. It's like you paid a lot of money, mm-hmm. you fought other, you know, buyers, and now You're this right. is your property technically, but you got to pay this. I I understand giving them time, like mm-hmm. hey, listen, we're gonna give you thirty, sixty days to find somewhere else to go, but. For you to pay them like twenty G's to get out, yeah. exactly, and then, and then they can stick to their guns about it, right? Mm-hmm. And say no, that's not enough. Court. Take you to court. That prolongs yeah. the process. Sometimes yeah. it takes up to a year. So you could buy a house and then have to wait three years to live in it, type of thing. Potentially, I would say three years is maybe dragging it, mm-hmm. but that's if easily you go to court a year. Okay, so that's you just bought a house. You didn't have right. to deal with that. Actually, I do have a tenant in in, in one of the mm-hmm. units, right? Because the property I bought is is also a duplex. Okay. Um. So the front house was vacant. Mm-hmm. Back house. Um. She tended to still in there. We came to an agreement. We have a contract in place, right? Written, obviously. Written, right? And um. And of course, I also had to pay a, a, a sum okay. for uh-huh. her to relocate, right? And I'm gonna be quite frank with you. This tenant, I think it all comes down to communication too, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Right. Communication. And um, having, as an agent, having your client's best interest at stake, right? And um, it's funny. So with this client, with this um, tenant, my first thing was, hey, you know, what's the situation? If, if you do, if we do need this back unit, do you have somewhere to go, right? Mm-hmm. So it was to understand where she's coming from. The last thing I want to do is come and say, hey, you got to get out. Put the stress on them. Exactly, right. So, you know, I got to know her situation, and then, it w- you know, we started talking numbers. I was like, what can I do to help ease the burden, right? Because I know anywhere you go, you're going to have to put a deposit. Right. Um, and, yeah, we came to an agreement. We have a contract in place. Can that get nasty still? If right. she backs off. Uh, right. backs well, but that's what you have an agreement for. And I'm sure you have lawyers, too. Right. So that's the good thing, too. You know, um, especially the brokerage that I work with. We. Who do you work with? Uh, Vida Real Estate. Vida yeah. Real Estate? V-I-D-A. Vida Real Estate. Oh, Vida. Vida. Yes. Vida. 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 Okay, I like yes. that. I like Vida. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pura Vida. So we're uh, located in Cerritos. Okay. And, um, yeah, so every transaction that we do, right, we actually have access to attorneys. Right. Oh, and nice. yeah, so that's amazing. very important. Mm-hmm. It's super, super important just because, like we said, we live in L.A. You never know what's written in those, exactly. you know, the conditions. Right. Yes. So what would be your advice to someone who is looking into a duplex or triplex and has obviously prior tenants in there, but they buy the home? I know the uh, answer. Hire you to. <laughs> right there you go right. there you go <laughs> that's a good answer you're not wrong yeah. you're not wrong um right you know. yeah. J- just because the way she said that how she spoke to her tenant uh, it's just remember it's not what you say but it's how you say and how you deliver that message Agreed. and obviously yes. like your your tone there sounded very like Thank calm you. and very caring Thank and people you. feel that you know so um I'm yeah, sure. you, you come off understanding. It's very important. Right. Very caring as well. It, yes. So I'm sure that lady was like, oh, yeah, you know, she has my best interest, which is good, uh, which I'm know, sure you do. Of course. At the end of the day, you know, and, and we came to an agreement where it's like, hey, you're going to have X amount of time, you know, mm-hmm. before I, I ask for the keys for the place. Um, but, yeah, my best recommendation would be, of course, you know, seek professional um, help. Mm-hmm. Right. And 
being that you're purchasing a property with tenants in place, you want to make sure they have the proper contracts in place, yeah. right? And you want to make sure that you know the rights, their mm-hmm. rights, right? Mm-hmm. Because let's say you come to an agreement of X amount. So do your research beforehand? Right. Okay. Because technically they have, mm-hmm. even though, let's say you're my tenant, right? Mm-hmm. I'm purchasing a property, you're the tenant. I'm signing an agreement with you. You agree to, let's say, $5,000, right? Okay. This is for LA City, for example. Mm-hmm. Technically, you're entitled to more, mm-hmm. right? But you're you're understanding that I'm communicating with you, right? We're coming to an agreement, and you're like, you know what, five thousand mm-hmm. dollars seems fair, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you have, and in, in I might don't quote me, but I believe it's forty five days to retract, mm-hmm. right? So even though you signed the off on it, the tenant has forty five yeah. days. Yes. Mm-hmm. So even though you signed off on it. And let's say you're just like, no, you know what? Um, Even with a signature. Yeah. Hmm. So. Okay. But after 45 days, if they find out later, it's too late. Too right. Late for okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, two questions. Um, you said something about Vida Real Estate. That's the name? Right. Okay. You guys come with attorneys already. We do. Okay. Yes. So that um, helped there... me understand the real estate world, but um, I don't know too much. But do other coverages or, or brokerages not come with lawyers usually? No. Yeah. Okay. It's not something that, you know, it's always, for example, if your client had. Our friend. Right. Yeah. Your friend. I'm sorry. We're going to refer him to you. After Thank this. you. Yes. We'll get him a triplex next. Nanda, we got oh, you. He got, he got he, it. He already triplex. got it. Yeah. yeah he already got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. We'll he's just going through that whole process right now. Right. But, but he's got um, a vision of purchasing more so yeah That's you great. know yeah you guys come of with course lawyers. i'd love to what's his name uh nando fernando i'd love to help fernando yeah we'll, we'll put you guys <laughs> yes. in touch gotcha. um but yeah i mean if fernando had you know um that type of resource this could have probably been prevented been or avoided. he could have yeah seen right. like maybe this isn't the best property for me right sure, now. Mm-hmm. Right? sure. Well, let me ask you this do you feel that it's it's the agent's duty to know the, these laws as well and to be able to explain the contract to the uh potential buyer you know, and it, absolutely, and mm-hmm. and that's the that's the unfortunate thing in our industry, and and maybe you guys can relate, but the barrier of entry for realtors is is rather low, mm-hmm. right? So it's just to really mitigate who's good from who's not. Mm-hmm. It, it's tough, right? It takes you know some working with people to realize, right. wow, you know, this person maybe did a sucky job for me, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe this person should have informed me about this. Mm-hmm. So yes, it is your realtors, you know duty they have to do their due diligence and advise you right because at the end of the day i mean that's just uh, Mm -hmm. you know uh, we have this duty to our clients right Mm -hmm. to best inform them to give them the right recommendations and it's just if we're not informed we got to go out and seek that information right Right. let's say i'm in a city where i haven't done a transaction before right Mm -hmm. but i know that i'm selling a property with tenants tell you what i have to go to the city i have to go to the county figure that out for my client Mm -hmm. That's what I do. That's the work right there. Right. That's the real work. That's what I have to do. And and that's how I'm able to sleep at night, right? Because mm-hmm. if I know I got a tenant into a, or a property owner into a situation where, you know, they're not going to succeed, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I can't, you know, I can't sleep at night. Or in your case, you can just probably, like, call your guys as lawyers and exactly. write, hey, we have this situation. So that yes. is a, a good one to punch right. combo to have right. the lawyers in the yeah. if there's something you don't know you can't answer hey you know what here's my lawyer you know speak to him definitely or. and um property managers right so we as agents have resource to property managers and that's actually a really good um tool in our tool belt because we can easily contact them and be like hey listen i have a property in this area what should i be aware of mm. right do these is there certain rules in place mm-hmm. um so yeah that's a huge resource or can they go after the the realtor for not doing that type of due diligence? It Probably might be not. A little tough. Yeah. yeah, that's why when he asked that question, mm-hmm. I was kind of shaking my head because well, I think at the end of the day, personally, it comes down to the buyer. Like right. I think the buyer should do everything in their effort to read and contact if they have to hire you know a lawyer out of pocket. That's just what comes with this territory, right? right. Now, again, thankfully, and I, I don't, and they're not paying me to do this, but your brokerage comes with lawyers already included. Right. I think that's a big deal. I'm to think you guys worked out a sponsorship deal or something. She's going to zail me after this. <laughs> is what's um, what yeah. made you be like that? And I know, I mean, we talked a little bit on the mm-hmm. phone yesterday. Maybe this is where you kind of get into your story a little bit, but because right. you're saying you go the extra mile. Like you're... Right you can't sleep at night if you don't figure this out for the client, which obviously as a customer Mm -hmm. for any product, they're going to love, you know, customer service like that. Right. I mean, customer service number one. Right. Right. We do, we do life insurance Mm -hmm. and, you know, can't tell you how many times like, 
you know, we got a client that wants to know about this company or that company or, or something sometimes even unrelated to life insurance. Like they want a will or a testament and we go that extra mile that really we're not getting paid to do. And right. Really, we don't have to do, but we do, mm-hmm. and that just, you know, says so much about you, but it, it means so much to that client. Right. Did you, are you naturally just like that, or you does know, it have to do with your story? Yeah, it definitely, I think it has to do a lot with my, you know, mm. the reason why I even got into real estate, right? Yeah, so what, so, what was that reason? Let's touch yeah, on that. Yeah, so, you know, um, my parents purchased a house back in around 2006, mm-hmm. right, so so we were directly affected by the 2008 recession, mm-hmm. right? Same. We got in this risky type of loan situation. And I mean, I remember, you know, I remember enough, right, where it impacted me. So around you that time. You were what, like? I was like 95, 8, 13? 13. Right? Teenager. So like uh, barely old. going into high school. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, you know, I mean, my parents, when they purchased that property, they were young. I want to say my dad was about 26. My mother was maybe 30. Wow, yeah, they were young. Yeah, I'm trying to do math real quick. Yeah. yeah. Don't reveal mom's age. On yeah. Right. Yeah, no, 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 she no, no. Careful. She'll come Careful. after me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they were they were young, right? Mm-hmm. And nonetheless, they're minorities, first home. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they were just excited about the idea, like, I can actually purchase a home, right? Mm-hmm. And mind you, back in, during that time, they were pre-approving anyone, right? right? If you had yep. a pulse, if you could mm-hmm. sign here, you're approved. You're getting a house today. Right. Yep. They didn't care about mm-hmm. debt-to-income ratio. Mm-hmm. Right. They didn't care about anything, right? Yeah. So Stuff it was that just, they're supposed to care about. Right. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, they got into this risky type of loan, mm-hmm. variable interest variable, rate. Yep. Yeah, you know. So for those that don't know what a variable interest rate, can you explain that real quick? Yeah, so variable mm-hmm. interest rate is uh, similar. Most credit cards, right, have mm-hmm. a variable interest rate, and basically that fluctuates with the market mm-hmm. so it could go up or down based on the interest rate right gotcha. so um the, all the products i do right i, I try not to push a, a, variable. a variable mortgage loan right mm-hmm. so those are fixed right mm-hmm. so whatever you sign up for that's what it's going to be it's gotcha. not going to change on you right it's five years later. and that's what a fixed is correct fixed right. is that mm-hmm. yes gotcha. and variable uh, it'll fluctuate mm-hmm. So if, if interest rates go up, your interest rate will go up. If gotcha. interest rates go down, your interest rate will go down. Let's face it, they rarely, you know, they're, do some, they're they always go up. Do people go for the variable because maybe initially it's low and they like that and exactly. then, but they know it's going to go up, but they still go for it. Right. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. just because in that time, that's what's best for them. Exactly. Yeah. Well, do, um, correct me, or answer, if I'm wrong, correct me, but do agents get paid more to sell a variable? Um, or does that even mm. have anything to do with it there? You know, I wouldn't know enough information regarding the loans. That's on a loan right? side, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, but for us as Asians, no. Okay. No. Not um, really quick. Mm-hmm. Just uh, I'm picturing a real estate for dummies book. Right. That's me. Okay. So uh, <gasps> what a, more, a loan officer, a real estate, how does it work? Let's right. say I want a house right now. I contact you first and then you deal with the loan people and right. Yeah. So, I mean, let's face it. Realtors are the ones that are most out there, right. Meeting with buyers and whatnot. So let's say you guys are like the face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's say, let's say you want a house. You guys both decide, you know what? We're going to partner up and we're going to get Marvick productions house. Got it. Right. (laughs) Um, the play, the today's version of the playboy mansion. Right. right? Yeah. Just full of uh, studios. (laughs) Yeah. Podcast. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, you guys would, you, you know, you reach out to me. You're like, hey, listen, you know, we want to get the process mm-hmm. started. And then what I do, and we go back to this, this is, you know, me because I want to have my client's best interest in mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I talk to you, right? And it's like, okay, what's your situation like? Are you self-employed? Are you a W-2 employee, right? Mm-hmm. How long have you been there? Um, are you ITIN? Are you social, mm-hmm. right? And based on that, You'll know. Um, I'll know who to send you to, right? Because I have le- a handful of loan officers that I mm-hmm. work with. Of course, all of them are amazing, right? Mm-hmm. But they're all different, right? Mm-hmm. So some of them are really good with ITIN applicants. Mm-hmm. Some of them are really good with down payment assistance, right? Some of them are really good, you know, with self-employed mm-hmm. clients. So based on our conversation and what I have a feel you need, mm-hmm. I'll send you to that loan right, officer. Right, right. Yeah. It, nice. it, it reminds me a lot of uh, underwriting, uh, underwriting yeah. insurance. Since we're, since we're a brokerage, we represent right. a lot of companies. And based on the client's situation, 
uh, w- with their health, Same we thing. know where to guide them to. I right? Okay, you know what? Yeah. This company if may you're really not healthy. You. We go here. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've got some breathing issues. We'll go here. Right. right. Actually, same thing. If you've got an ITIN number, there's only certain companies we can use. But if you got a social, you have more options. Right. I get yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you know that's how it works. And then depending on you know the loan officer that you go with, mm-hmm. sometimes they're they're brokers, mm-hmm. right? So they'll be able to compare. Um, what different banks can offer you, right? Gotcha. Some of them work with only one company, mm-hmm. right? So, dip- it, it, it's all a, it's all it's all a different case by case, yeah. you could say, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, and then they uh, pretty much, you know, where where the parties then. Who makes more money, real estate agents or loan officers? Or what's the proper name for them? Loan officers? Yeah, loan officers, loan, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've heard, like, some loan people say, like, oh, there's a lot of money. But I guess it right. depends. You know, I, w- I think per transaction, um, it comes down to maybe a realtor will, will probably make more money. But the thing is that realtors can only take on so much at a time, right? right? right. And we're constantly chasing. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're dealing with a little less deals. They have a lot more volume. Right. Really? Yeah. So gross at the end of the year, they probably make more money or or it's a little more attainable just because they have a lot more files at once. Right. If you're a good realtor, you'll have a lot. Yeah, because they're dealing with a lot more real estate agents. Right. Exactly. On a monthly basis, though, like how much um, how much can a a realtor take on? Like how uh, what's the average that you that you've seen? Them you know, actually selling a month. The average for realtors gross is actually very low. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like annual income, it's very low. The um, average you're saying? Yeah. What in California or just the US? You know, I, I might have overheard it's something like forty or sixty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's actually very low because we go back to this whole thing. The barrier of entry is rather low, mm-hmm. right? And the thing you guys know this, right? I'm preaching to the choir, but I mean sales isn't easy, mm-hmm. right? It's a lot what? <laughs> it's like the easiest <laughs> you know fine. cold calls aren't fun mm-hmm. you know following it, up with it, your it's, leads it's uncomfortable work. but you know I, I feel like once you get out of that that stage of uncomfortableness and you right. choose growth and it's you start working on yourself yeah it becomes easy right um and and that's very true that's very very true and once you get past the idea of this person might, you know, chew me out and, and tell mm-hmm. me all these kinds of things, but it's personal. not personal, mm-hmm. right? right? It's yep. not personal. Right. Right. Um, Sometimes I, you can call someone on their on a bad day, right? And it's nothing against you, but it's not. They yeah. just lost their job or something. There's times yeah. where that same person turns into a faithful client, right? Right. right. I've seen uh, it happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, I mean, it it could be as low as some people don't close any deals, right? Uh, but then there's Top producers making well over a comfortable three hundred thousand, a comfortable five hundred. You know, right. there's all kinds of top producers making over a million. So. And that's just them themselves, or by that point, they have a team, like a brokerage. If you're if you're closing that type of volume, you you have a team mm-hmm. in the sense of you know uh, someone's you, below you, someone's you get a helping percentage you with your files. Of, mm-hmm. yeah, same, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, but the, oh, you're you're asking like, do they have um? Are they a broker? No, that's sing- that's yeah. realtors. That's I can yeah. see that. I can yeah, see yeah. that. That's realtors. Nice. So they're, they're, it's it's what you put into it is mm-hmm. what you get out. Right. Yeah. Right. Like anything. How long have you been doing it for? You know, so I actually became licensed back in 2017. 2017. 2017. So almost yeah. seven years or maybe right? already. Yeah. yeah. You remember when you got your license? Um, 2017, like right around September. Okay. So it's yeah. coming up. Yeah. 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 Do you celebrate each year? Like, hey, this one I got. I should. I should, right? Yeah, I should. That day I should, like, maybe make a thousand calls or something. Right, something yeah. like that. Something like yeah. that. Close a big deal. I know. Um, so what were you doing before that? Were you going to college? Or if you did, what yeah. were you studying and majoring? So actually, I um, I had just finished college, right? Mm-hmm. I was at UC Irvine, okay. and I studied uh, business and sociology, mm-hmm. right? And um, coming out, I was just like, all right, so, so what do I want to do? Right. And in during college, I've always dabbled within the garment industry. Like I mentioned to you guys, my family, they're in the garment industry. So I had a clothing brand, you know, and I did e-commerce. So it's always that hustle has always been, gotcha, you know, gotcha. in, in me. you. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, going back to the whole reason why I got into real estate, I was like, you know, but I want to help people. Right. Yeah, this is fun. You know, the, the clothing industry, it's fun. I was like, but I really genuinely want to help people. You know, and, and that came. Did did you already know you wanted to help people, or, or this was after your whole experience and all that? 
Well, well actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if you want to finish that. Yeah, definitely. I'm sorry. We went off, right? I know, I know, yeah. No. We'll bring it back, <laughs> we're, we're though. Bringing it, we're looping it around, right? Yes. But, yeah, so, you know, the whole situation with us being affected by the 2008 recession mm -hmm. was, you know, I saw my parents just age drastically, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it was just like, we went from being really comfortable, living in an apartment, right? Father made decent money to all of a sudden, it's like, there's no money. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we're behind a whole lot of mortgage payments. And, um, you know, and, and it was it was it was tough to see. Mm -hmm. It was tough to see that, you know, weekend rolled around and it's like all we can afford was really a five dollar pizza. Mm -hmm. We were lucky that Italian cheese bread from Little Caesars, too. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you How know. many siblings, by the way? Just one. Yeah. So it's just my sister and I. Yeah. She's um, six years younger. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, at that time I was, what, 13. She was about seven. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it was tough to see that, you know, my parents had completely been misinformed right. about mm -hmm. the risk. Mm -hmm. Right. Because had they known the risk of this type of mortgage product, maybe they wouldn't have done it. Right. You were able to capture that at 13? Like, you remember thinking, like... As I got older, okay. right? Yeah. As yeah. I got older. The and the together. moment I just knew there wasn't money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the moment on. I was mm -hmm. like, why can't I have a, a Hawaiian birthday party, right? right? right. In the moment, it's just like, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that, yeah. right? And my parents have always... I'm the eldest, right? Uh -huh. Um... And my uh, my parents have always put a lot of responsibility on me. My mother, she's always explained things to me. So I remember her explaining to me, you know, we have a variable interest rate. We don't know what's going to happen. Mm. You know, we're not doing okay. So they had that loan. Yeah. That right. you don't Shout recommend. out to moms, at least trying to explain that too. You right. see, so you can kind of have more of an understanding. Exactly. Oh. Um, so it was never like, hey, no, everything's fine. It was just like, hey, things aren't okay, right? Mm. So we're cutting back, right? Um, and that And that was really tough to see. I think that... You know, when we first bought our home, we were we were excited, right? I had my own bedroom. Um, you know, they painted the house. They put a new carpet. Uh, we had a chimney. We had a, a living mm -hmm. room, a yeah. family room. We're like chimney, Christmas tree. It was tree. beautiful. The, the dream. It was a dream. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, what's going on? Like, they, my parents right. don't have money. You know, my mom is stressed. My dad is stressed. Right. And it came down to the point where my dad was like, you know what? I can't make ends meet. Like I have to divvy up this house. Mm -hmm. And so he put a wall in between the family room and the living room. And he turned that into a studio. He and rented it out. And rented it out. Well, right. good for him to yeah. make adjustments. You know, though, yeah. Find a solution so there. so I, I shared a little bit um, on the call yesterday, but we actually lost our home. So 2008, my dad had two homes, uh, one in South LA and one in Whittier. We lost both of them. And, you know, as, as you were talking right now, you're talking about, like, you know, having your own room and the chimney. And I, I laugh because those were such big things to me as well. Like, just having, I mean, I grew up in apartments mm -hmm. where, you know, I mean, you know how Latinos roll. There's, like, ten people in a bedroom sometimes. Right. You know, not just yeah. a car, but, you know, sometimes <laughs> in a bedroom. Um, I used to sleep with my dad. I mean, we used to sleep in the living room, and we finally got a house. And it's, oh, there's so much space. Like, right. I can run around the house. So I remember that. You know, that really yes. hit home. Um, and when we lost that though, you know, I think for me, if I'm not mistaken, like, I think I was off to like college already. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really feel mm -hmm. that impact as much. Cause I'm a little bit older than you, but okay. that makes yeah. sense that you, you know, were still going through it. And I was just thinking, where was I? But I didn't really deal with that. And I know my grandmother did. And to this day, I, I mean, it still hurts her, you know, right. cause they work so hard and, mm -hmm. you know, to have that and then, for it to be gone, it, it breaks her heart even to this day. And to, yeah, as I'm listening to you, it's bringing me back memories. Um, so my parents actually bought their dream house in 2008, oh, wow. right when the economy just dropped. Yeah. Mm. So they purchased a home in Bakersfield, California. Okay. Still remember the address, 7312 Lahaina Avenue. <laughs> beautiful home. I mean, if you Google it, it's a beautiful home. Yeah. Um, so it was like we went from living in the ghetto to bam, we're like upper middle class, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but it, I kid you not, maybe a couple months after we purchased the home or they purchased the home, economy just dropped. Right. So as I'm hearing you speak about the day-to-day -day of watching your parents with the stress, I live that as well. Mm -hmm. I could relate to that 100%. You know, the arguments of money, of this, that, and that. Like, how are we going to pay the electric bill this month? You know, how right. are we going to do this? And unfortunately, in 2012, we actually, we, we uh, before losing the home, uh, it was put up for short sale. So... I don't want to get too into it, but I'm going to get into it a little bit. Uh, so my parents, uh, my dad is an, was an immigrant at the time, didn't have papers. So my mom had a, a citizenship, not citizenship, but a work permit. 
So she co- um she bought the house with her sister. Mm-hmm. So her sister and her uh, my uh, my aunt's husband successful. They had a lot of properties already in Vegas. They co-signed with my mother. Oh. So what happened was when we were going through that process of uh, of um you know be behind on the mortgage, so they put up the house for sale without us letting us know. Wow. So it was like one day to another, we had to move out. The the house sold. So. Uh, I don't say we lost the home now that I know is the house was put up for sale. I hear you. Without okay. our knowledge of it. And it was just like one day to another. It was like, yo. Wait, who put it up for sale? Uh, my aunt. Shit. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we, auntie uh, didn't let y'all know? Uh, they didn't let us know. Yo. That's a whole nother it's story. A, it's, it's a whole nother story. We don't talk to them today. <laughs> but, um, but it, it, you know, because when you find out, it's like, all right, bro. Like, if, if, if you had my best interest, we're family. Why wouldn't you help me out? If you know I'm behind a little bit of mortgage, it's like, hey, you know what, man? Here, here's here, I'm in front of the money, mm-hmm. um, you know, get through these times, you know, th- things are going to change in the future. That sucks. And, and, that, and that's what somebody has your best interest, right? right? And unfortunately, in this situation, it's like we're family, but it's like we got stabbed in the back in a sense. Fucking uh, strangers are getting best treat, better treatment than family nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Listen to these stories of the tenants we just talked about. Like if you're a tenant, right. mm-hmm. you're entitled to three years or two years and you get money, but exactly. sometimes family doesn't even get that. Yeah. <coughs> oh, that's unfortunate, you know. And, and that house skyrocketed. So imagine we they bought it for three hundred and eighty thousand at that time. Mm-hmm. That we sold the house for one ninety. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, and that house today is worth over six hundred thousand. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So we 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 lost big time. But you know what? Uh, my father he, he he took it to the took it on the chin, and now because of all that, he actually started getting more into real estate himself and informing himself. Uh, so that mistake doesn't happen again. That's great. Good for him. Yes. Good for him. That's and you know what? There it's not a loss if you learned. Right. Right? If you learned and and you just you, you move on. You brush it off, you move on and and yeah, I mean, fortunately, we we didn't lose the home, right? But it it was tough and and you know, it's crazy now that you know, all three there's three of us. Mm-hmm. 100% of us were affected with the 2008 right. recession. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's it's insane. Um and yeah, definitely. I think that it was it was something tough, mm-hmm. right? But that probably contributed to your character a whole right. lot too, 100%. right? Because yeah. you saw that, mm-hmm. um, and, and it, it makes you really value things, mm-hmm. right. right? So it goes back to this whole thing where it's like things are tough, mm-hmm. things are tough, and and things are okay maybe right now, but there's it's not to say that you things never can know. get tough out of nowhere, right? Mm-hmm. And we go back to this whole thing where. You know, as I got older, too, I realized I was like, you know, had my parents had the right knowledge, mm-hmm. the right information, maybe they wouldn't have taken that on. Right. And then so many people got rich during the 2008 mm-hmm. recession, too. Right. Because mm-hmm. they bought mm-hmm. when those homes were being sold yeah. at well, th- short sale value. Well, think about that. The person who bought our house, I still remember, too, that I think they were coming from out here. They were from Lincoln Heights or something like that. Right. And they bought that house 190000 Like, that's mm-hmm. nothing. Exactly. And today, yes. that house is worth. Right. So, you know, and, and it's a situation where it's like, yeah, some people are going to win. Unfortunately, some people are going to lose. Um, but and it's you know. usually the uninformed that lose. Right. Exactly. Like yeah. it's the ones that don't keep up on the trends, the ones that don't do the research, the <laughs> ones that don't study and put in right. the time. So so that's something that triggered you where you were like, hey, now that I'm learning this, I don't want right. this to happen again. And that's where your real estate journey began. Yeah, and, you know, that's where I was, um, you know, I was like, let me focus on, you know, our people, which is tends to be minorities. And, mm-hmm. and the fact that, you know, they, they're not they don't have the information available to them. Mm-hmm. Right. They don't have the right guidance. They don't know that they could actually buy. Mm-hmm. Right. So that was my whole thing where I was like, you know what, let me go this route. And sure enough, you know, I started um diving into it a little bit more and I was like yeah this is I I enjoy doing this I really enjoy doing this in the right place yeah 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 it felt like it felt like okay this is right and you know I and then I saw the investment side of it right where my parents were it's like yeah they were underwater for a bit and then they the property they rescued it it came back up nice good for them so it's like well real estate is one of those things that it's it's a long-term game it's a long-term game and you know if you wait it out like you're gonna come back out on your feet Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that was the, the main reason where I was like, let me get into a field where I can help people. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, that's, that's my passion for it. Right. And I don't Good. want, I, I realize that a lot of people making these purchases, right. Yeah. You see the couple or whatever, but then you got to think about 
okay, the family, Mm -hmm. right? What situation is it going to put their family under, right? Right. Am I setting them up for success, Mm. right? Because there's there's product all day, right? Despite what they tell us that there's lack of inventory, there's product all day. Mm -hmm. And there's clients all day, right? Yeah. But you as a realtor, right, you as a realtor, or at least a good one, have to be able to bridge the gap between both, Mm -hmm. right? And I can have this killer product, right? Because I deal with all types of clients. Yes, I deal with, you know, first-time home buyers, minorities. I also deal with investors, seasoned investors, right, gotcha. that flip prop properties all day. So let's say I have this killer deal, right? Let's say it's a home that needs uh, $150,000 in work, mm-hmm. right? But you could potentially sell it for $400,000 above what you got it for. Mm-hmm. That's a deal, right? For the right person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can't get a first-time home buyer in that, right? Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm probably setting them up for failure. Right. Well, what if the first time home buyer though actually has money though? And and Yeah. Cuz what do you mean? What do you mean you set them up for failure like in what sense like in the I sense mean in my opinion like it only be failure if they wouldn't have the money to mm-hmm. two things, the knowledge into what they're getting themselves into and then two the finances to cuz a first time home buyer, correct me if I'm wrong, but they actually get some of the best deals because right when it comes to loans and interest rates or or maybe not um, yeah, th- th- you know what? First time home buyers do. They definitely do get a good deal. There, There's all types of assistance for them. Um, but what I mean by I would be setting them up for failure is like sometimes, you know, as a first time home buyer, if I give them the right information, right, and they have the resource, maybe they have the money to, to invest, by all means, right? But I need to be able to know, okay, in understanding my client, I also have to understand their ability. Right. So it's like with that, I'll be able to better connect them to the product. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it's a first time home buyer, they have no experience flipping. I'm not going to recommend that deal to them. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be like, hey, let's get you into something a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you're interested in flipping, for example, let me connect you with this investor. Right. Mm -hmm. And you you shadow him. You go on board. Right. Mm -hmm. And and maybe you will shadow them for the first deal. You take part in it. You participate any way you can. L- learn the I see ropes. what you're saying. Yeah, you're saying. yeah. You you plug them in with a mentor. Like you won't really let them go in by themselves. Is what you're saying, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Of course. That's and smart. Yeah. But also, just because like you get approved for this loan, it doesn't mean to use it all, right? Like for example, somebody gets like a nine hundred thousand right. um, w- approved loan. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna go out and buy a freaking house that's, you know, nine hundred thousand exactly. I mean, pr- people right. probably do that, but that's that's like a what six thousand, seven thousand mortgage right there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like more. 75, 8 maybe. Um, but yeah, you know, most people right now, I'm going to be honest with what we're seeing, mm-hmm. whatever they're pre-approved for, that's kind of what they go for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just because home prices are so high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Home prices are so high and they just keep going up, right? So right now, right now some people are sitting in the in the sidelines, right, waiting just for waiting. interest rates to yeah. drop. Yep. Right. And the thing is that ready to capitalize. Exactly. The thing is that the interest rate drop might not be too significant where it's going to make an impact on on you. It's not going to make a huge impact. Right. But nonetheless, psychologically, a lot of buyers are going to be like, this is a time to jump in. Right. Right. And the real estate market is based on supply and demand. So as more buyers are in the market, that's only going to make home prices go up. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we're telling our clients right now is if you want to buy. Mm -hmm. Right. Buy right now, regardless of where the interest rate is, right? Because if you're waiting for that interest rate to drop, of course, if it makes sense for you to wait, we'll do that with you, right? But let's keep in mind all that incoming competition once the interest rate drops a percent, gotcha. right? Um, so, yeah, that's one of those things where it's like, and and I'm saying people max out their pre-approval, right? Um, sometimes they're just like, we, we run their financials because a lot of times we underestimate really how much a person has to make in order to qualify for a home, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest, like anything below 100 probably doesn't get you much. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah. Here, here in California. 100K a, a, a year really doesn't get us much, right? So we're seeing on Maybe average. Maybe a garage or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We're seeing Maybe if you're lucky. Yeah. Average, most people. You Without know, a tenant in it. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to afford a home here, uh-huh. have to make like 150000 and up. Right, right, right. And that's why a lot of people just leave California, go to Texas, Arizona. But even even their markets are starting to skyrocket, too. They are. But they're still better than Cali's. Still better, but obviously they got to deal with a lot of other mm-hmm. shit like the weather. Right. 
right. You got to pick your poison, you know. <laughs> like That's the true. weather. Yeah. Like you're the you're weather. not wrong. You're the not weather weather wrong. They true. get like tornadoes and yeah, shit. I've been to Texas, man. And uh, that's kind of my thing. We're, like, oh, you know, we, we went, went to Houston? Yeah, we went to Houston. I think we went somewhere else in Texas, Dallas as well. But it's like, yo, that, that humidity ain't no joke. Can it's I do this insane. 12 <laughs> Yeah. 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 The year. Just stay home and with your AC. Question for you. Sure. Um you so so you said like uh you saw the minority, you saw our people, Latinos, mm-hmm. I'm and you know, I'm assuming you're referring to. What have you seen so far since your time of getting licensed? What from helping our people out, what have you learned? Like what what yeah. you know, the good and the bad. Like, oh, I've noticed my people are really good at this, but we need more help here. Right. Just because, you know, they got the money. They just don't have the knowledge. That's a great question. (laughs) Uh You know, the thing about minorities, and and you guys could probably agree to this, is that a lot of um, a lot of them, you know, like our our landscapers, our housekeepers, they're hustling and they're putting that money away. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes I have my ITEM borrowers bring me their bank statements and I see. 500k just sitting in their bank account, right? Hello. We're I know. Over here, we'll put them in an investment <laughs> account. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so they have the ability, mm-hmm. right? And, and and they're hungry, mm-hmm. right? Think about minorities, immigrants, they came to work. They right? came with vision. They 100%. came to work. Mm-hmm. The job that Michael doesn't want to do, they're going to do. Right. Miguel right? will do it. Do it. Miguel, Michael won't, but Miguel will. Exactly. <laughs> you know yes. Um so yeah, they came to work and and they put their money away. So, you know, it, but it comes down to um, a lot of times the programs, they don't allow for them to, to really get into that property, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it makes it a little tougher for them, mm-hmm. right? But it, that doesn't stop them. That doesn't right. stop them because we're talking about an ITIN borrower. Typically, they have to come in with anywhere between 15 to 20% down. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking like a $700,000 home, your ITIN borrower has to come in with like 140 mm-hmm. Right. In comparison to a Social Security borrower who can come in with three and a half percent. Right. So I was going to ask, though, a a person with an I-10 can get a home. They're just going to have to put in a much larger down payment. Okay. And, you know, so. I mean, that's not bad. At least they still can. Right. And dabbling into, you know, programs, speaking to different people. I actually came across a program that allows them to buy with as little as three and a half percent down. Whoa. Yeah. That's huge. Um, So the program is actually. uh, No, I can't share that information. It's it's, it's, Yes. yes. You can't share what? Because then all realtors are going to go to them. Yeah. You can't share the name. But but, 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 so if you have an I-10 and you have money and you're looking to buy a home and you don't want to pay 15 to 20 percent interest. Right. Yeah, death is saying, or, or not interest, but down payment. Right. Right. Yes. You're saying that you, there is a way, you have mm-hmm. found a way where they can There's pay lower than 5%. Exactly. Mm-hmm. She can't reveal the name because obviously, you know. But we'll make sure to put her information <laughs> down there. Her name is Yadeth Gomez. So yes. call her. <laughs> okay. What's the, what's the name of the company? Vida. Vida. Yes. There it is. There yeah. But go. don't call, if you call Vida, ask for Yadeth. Correct. There we go. Okay. There Thank we go. you. That's amazing. Yeah. That's huge. That's okay. Is, yeah. That's ama- really good yeah honestly. And, and it took some while. It took my a while. Cousin. Definitely. <laughs> it took a while, you know, to, to get to the source. Like I had heard of rumors and I was like, everyone I kept reaching out to, they're like, no, you know. You're 100% certain. Yeah. Yes. Damn. Yes. And everyone, that's you know, that's good so, news. so that's great news for them. And mind you, this is another thing. So, yes, the down payment, but also typically the interest rate for an ITIN borrower is about, you know, two, three percent higher than your market, your average. Sure, right. Sure. So right now we're talking about an ITIN borrower typically 10%? would get like a nine, 10 percent mm-hmm. interest rate. And even then they still do it because they have the vision. Right. Right, right. And they're just like, let me do this for my family. That's the American dream right there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Man. That's interesting. Yeah. I just got a cousin that got here yesterday. From, from <laughs> camp, um, please. He, he needs please an do. I-10 number first. We'll get him there. We'll get him. Oh, we'll go okay. to MacArthur Park. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you've noticed that. So that's that's a, that's a good thing. You're noticing that our people work very hard. And you, you just reminded me of uh, when we when I used to work at Primerica, one of uh, our uplines or brokers, he shared a story. Oh, no, no, no. Well, he, the story he shared that uh, you brought to me right now, just talking about how, like, immigrants, they, they work these typical jobs, and they they look broke. Or they look like they don't have money. But, yeah, you'll pull up their bank statement. It's like, oh, shit. Is that 500000 Like, right. it just reminded me, like, he, he talked to, like, a, a business owner who had his own uh, ice cream truck. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, he had, like, 100000 in cash. 
Paletero, yeah. right? Those paleteros, they be mm-hmm. you know like cash money, <laughs> right? So it's yeah. it's you're some right. Some of them don't have bank bank accounts; they just have it cash, right? right. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah which you'll need an account, obviously. Right, you know, for, right. yes, we need yeah. paper trail. But that is a good mm-hmm. point. That is a good point that you know our people come in with vision. They work very hard, and no matter what's thrown at them, they'll they'll find a way. Right. That's the thing. You you find the way. What right. are what are some of the the bad things or some like areas of improvement that our mm-hmm. people could improve on on their own? Because obviously right. they'll have you in their corner, the lawyers. But what's mm-hmm. something they can do? You know, I yeah, don't know, you know, if anything, yeah, it comes down to a lot of times when they have their business right. Um, they won't establish it, right? Or they won't mm. open a bank account for that type of business. So it's all very that. just commingled, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so just to, 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 they need better, or we need better information, right, from our bankers, right? How to structure like, things. Yes, yeah, yeah. To, ha- to help them structure, right? Better information. Because a lot of times, let's let's face it, a lot of these ITIN borrowers are here illegally, mm-hmm. right? And illegal people constantly live in fear. Right. right, where we're not going to go to the bank and ask too many questions. You want to stay under the radar, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But really, really, I mean, ICE isn't going to come typically for one person, right? So it's like a lot of times you can go in there, you can ask questions, right? And and it's at the bank you're going to have that Hispanic person who right. you can be upfront to tell them your situation, right? Mm-hmm. You could probably it's going to relate as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Gente no tenga miedo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, go to uh, Spanish-speaking banks, <laughs> what she's saying. <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, so I think that that's where the biggest area of improvement is, right? Where it's like yeah. that that structure, right? But that's so hard. I mean, I, I feel you. I think that's very fair. Well, I think you touched on it. It's, it's like fear. Fear is what's going to stop them true. there of being deported and losing everything that they exactly. already have. It. You know, if they're able to overcome that fear and just talk to somebody in confianza, Right. They could guide him a little bit. Or or they can maybe someone in the family that has a social. Would you recommend that maybe like going through maybe a, a, a kid or maybe a brother, a sibling, like mm-hmm. kind of like maybe how they did. But yeah. I don't think that was that's why they did it. But would you ever recommend that? Oh, definitely. No? Yeah. Right. We got to be mindful, too, though. Right. I think that I can probably uh, confirm you guys were responsible children. Right. Where it's like if you had fine responsible <laughs> i mean i was a little wild but responsible okay then never mind i came home right. no at but three in the um, morning. you got to be mindful too right where it's like typically you know if, if you can trust that i'm gonna put the house under my kid's name mm-hmm. and they're not gonna get into any trouble i get what you're saying yeah because yeah. at right. the end People of the you day trust. right once that home starts gaining equity mm-hmm. god forbid once you know money starts yeah, yeah well, god forbid, gets in the middle Let's say, you know, the child's on title and they get into some type of, you know, they get into some type of legal issues. A lien gets put to their name. Now that lien is attached to the property. Yeah. yeah, yeah Which yeah, yeah. a living trust is a great way to prevent those types of issues because they do come up. Right. Um, it, but yeah, I would say I would definitely say yes. If you have someone that you can trust, mm-hmm. definitely. Because consider it. Consider it. Yeah. And because talk it out. Let's say, for example, that, you know, Vic, you're an item borrower mm-hmm. and you, you, you know, you talk to your brother, your brother has a social for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, um, you know, let me let me go ahead and have you get this property for me. Mm-hmm. You could still go on title, mm-hmm. even though you're not on the loan. Right. Gotcha, yeah, so yeah. technically, you'd still have rights to the property. Mm-hmm. Right. And and that's something that a lot of times people don't understand. So even though, let's say you're not on the loan, but mm-hmm. you're on title, mm-hmm. technically, your brother cannot sell the property without, without you signing gotcha. off on it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're still completely you have ownership over the property. So, yeah, if that's know. the only way to go, of course. Right. Because the yeah. last thing you want to do is just sit back in fear and not invest. Right. right? And stay renting your whole life and pay someone else's mortgage. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is a fun. And also rent is also increasing. It's mm-hmm. turning to a mortgage. So you might as well just buy a home. Right. And, and not only that, but it's just getting so much more difficult to buy a home. Right. We have all these foreign investors. We have all these big companies like Redfin, Zillow, Open Door, swooping up these single family residences. Right. I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's full developments of townhomes and condos that aren't going to be sold. Right. They're just their intent is to be rented out. Mm-hmm. Right. So, well, the, I, I'm sure you so follow Grant Cardone. I was yes. just about to bring him up too. Yeah. Um, well, he's uh, he, he I, I follow him and he's mm-hmm. been talking lately about he's been talking about it for a while and I've seen a lot of just um, just media on this and just a lot of uh, news on this where uh, we're becoming a renters 
you know, right. uh, like nation, like, yeah. like, and not to go off on a tangent, but I think with COVID, I think with, um, all of these loans and all this help that was given out and these checks that were given, you know, these, whatever, what were they called? Like relief? stimulus, stimulus checks. Yes. Exactly. I think that they're programming. My theory is that, and I can see that they're programming us to depend more on the government. Right. That's what uh, they and, want. And part of that is renting. Part of that is like, you're not even going to want to be a homeowner anymore. Like why? Mm-hmm. Why it's so expensive? Like he said, the mortgage, the interest rates, all. I'd rather just rent. I'd rather mm-hmm. just. What does that does that freak you out? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, it, it definitely freaks me out. Just because I'm sorry, you know, I was out in the market as a buyer just recently, mm-hmm. and I kept getting, you know, outbid. I had to relinquish buyer rights, right? Where it's like, okay, you know, let me go. 50k above asking price right and that's that's no fun right and then i'm going into these houses where you know i'm seeing a lot of foreign investors Mm -hmm. right and and that's happening a lot with i feel like there's a lot less inventory for flippers right because these foreign investors will come and they're okay with buying the property above maybe above value right in just in just holding on to it it. right Yes. Why weren't they able to do that before? Did we have some kind of law that would like limit China on how many houses they can buy? <laughs> yeah. And funny. I mentioned China because yeah. I know they bought a lot of property. I'm not just throwing yeah. them in there, but they actually have. But yeah. was like, why is that happening? Is it just because Americans have less money to buy and now they're swooping in? Do you know? It's because of what you just said, bro. We're so dependent that we're, uh, we're living. Is that it though? Or I mean, what do you, since you're in that world, like yeah. what would you? You know, I think it's come down to, um, they're, they're in the market and they just have a lot more power because we as Americans, you know, maybe we don't have the most in savings, right? We don't have so, that yeah, buying so it's a money power, thing. right? So it's like, let's say, you know, I'm competing with an offer that's all cash. Mm-hmm. That's 50K above asking. There's no com- there's no competing. No, <laughs> there's not. And there's lack of inventory, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm competing with these foreign investors on the same properties as a seller. I mean, me, even me as a seller, I'm going to be like, you know, Kiddo, I wish I could help you, but I'm gonna have to go with this cash offer that's 50k right. above asking, right? It's, it's like, just business. It at is, the end of the day. Mm-hmm. right? So I mean, yeah, it comes <sighs> down to that. That um, maybe as buyers, we become a little less powerful, right? Mm-hmm. Just, you know? I think a good investment is uh, somewhere in Mexico. Hmm. Sinaloa, interesting. Y a la playa, por la playa. Right. Do you Jalisco. agree? What do you think? Um, I, I still think U.S. is uh, U.S. Yeah. is the place to be in. So what, what, what do you think about buying a property somewhere out there and using it as a as an investment property? Property either like uh, Airbnb. You know, a lot of people travel out there. Uh, what, what do you feel about oh, that? I think that's great. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, and yeah, I mean, no, nothing wrong with it. Um, I do one thing that, and I don't know too much about it, but I've talked to family out there, and they've told me that. So here, tenants have rights, right? Mm. Over there, they also have rights. Oh, shit. So, like, let's say you have a property. And a lot of times, you know, you pay a lot less for these properties. The cartel runs those rights. Yeah. So you're okay with the property (laughs) sitting vacant for a little bit, right? Mm. And I've heard of people who lose their properties because squatters go in there. And all of a sudden, if they're there for a certain period of time. Let's talk about squatters. They have ownership. Let's. Squatters, (laughs) it's getting crazy. It's insane. Right? Like, they have rights. They do. (laughs) Well, there's this whole, there's this whole strategy by this one dude that he was, I'm I'm sure they banned him from TikTok, right? Yeah, he got banned. Yeah, because he was giving out games. Squatting, yes. you you saw the saw video. That, yes. What was your um? I mean, if you Which don't mind, is. two things. Can you s- explain what he said in simpler terms? I saw it briefly. Well, well, so his strategy was something along the lines of like, if you squat for a certain amount of days, like they can't kick you out, and there's there's nothing they could do to like take you out, right. which is just crazy. It's like yes. what what is? But also, like if they did some type of maintenance into the home and like take took care of the home i guess they can't kick you out as well something like that yeah yeah like yeah you did the landscaping and just kind of maintain the property oh, wow they, uh, yeah it's, it's it's crazy but i, I heard you he got banned and i don't i don't know if you got arrested or not but. you like squatters right <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> they're your favorite oh my gosh that you know what um a funny story it actually didn't happen to me it happened to my broker um but he was telling us of a time where they were about ready to close right so they were doing like their final walkthrough at this point <gasps> the loan had already funded right Dang. it hadn't recorded yet luckily but it hadn't what it recorded. hadn't recorded 
So uh, when you purchase a home, the two last steps are funding and recording of the loan, right? Funding and recording. Right. Got it. So funding is like the bank releases the funds, right? And then recording is where it gets recorded with the county. Right? Okay. And after the recording, you're officially the owner. Got it. So uh, they were doing the final walkthrough on this property, and all of a sudden he sees furniture in the property. Oh, shit. And the property had been vacant the whole time, and yeah. he calls the, the buyer, and he's like, hey, did you move in without, like, you know, me knowing yeah. and the buyer's like what are you talking about right. right he was even a little bothered he's like why would you move in like you know we we haven't recorded and the buyer's like what are you talking about yeah. and he's like well, let me call you right back right so this squatter had came into the property drawn up a fake um contract? rental agreement and said i i signed this contract with someone I signed this contract okay. with someone. They told me that I, you know. Who does he show property. that to? The property manager? Or? He showed it to the 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 realtor, uh-huh. which was my broker in this situation. And so the realtor's like, no. He's like, this isn't real. But now he has a contract right. with a signature. So it's enough to, you know, take take it to court. Take time. Yeah. And, and just, yeah. And milk Fuck it. Fuck that. Wow. How so, long ago so was this? Um, I want to say it was maybe about five years ago. These squatters yeah. are smart, though. They're doing well, their own research. There's a video I just recently saw. This one's kind of freaky and scary where they're, um, it's a little bit different. Like this, this squatter didn't have furniture, <laughs> but it, it's all recorded. I'm, I'll send it to you guys later. But the video is like that this, this couple is going through a walkthrough of just like an apartment. Right. And as they're going through the walkthrough, I mean, we've all, you know, gone through one of these before. And, you know, here's the living room. Here's the kitchen. And <laughs> Somebody comes out the restroom. Yeah, bro, so so the girl <laughs> the girl goes to a, one of the bedroom. <laughs> no way. And, you know, they're going through everything. Whatever, and they open the closet, and there's a fucking person in there. And then she, of course, she, Screaming, like any normal yeah, human being, is like, oh, startled and runs. There's somebody in there. And then everybody just frantically, you know, just gets out. And what? That's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. Uh, on, the, on that note, though, Maybe like buying a, a property, a like in another country, they always recommend to have a family member, obviously, that you know and trust mm-hmm. that can stay there to, to prevent You're right. situations yeah, like that. Yeah, because besides mm-hmm. squatters, so my other aunt she told me that her friend owned a, a, a little rancho mm-hmm. right um and apparently the cartel took over it yeah shit and at that yeah. point you can can't do nothing that yeah yeah you yeah, can okay. say yeah, you cartel say so. uh, well. <laughs> yeah we're we've got our own connections but all right, depends all right. Who's watching. Uh-huh. so um yeah cartel. so <laughs> the cartel took over it and at that point you know they were like you know, I guess they had started had started growing mm-hmm. poppy or something, right? Oh, shit. And he that was part of their contract, like their <laughs> no, no, no. They didn't they bother started. drawing yeah, yeah, up no, an no. agreement. They were just like, "This is our property." This is our you want to know my contract? AK forty seven on the table. Seriously. Say something. <laughs> and and my and you know, this is a woman, and uh, she was just like, "I'll like, just take my L and move on." Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And because I mean, there it's just really hard. I mean, here it's gonna be long. Well, you'll get your property back, maybe in an effed up condition, but you're going to get it back mm. eventually. Uh, yeah. Over there, it's a little tougher. Dang. Yeah, I, yeah. Agree. I um, agree. Different world out there. But no, you're right. You're totally right. You're uh, in, And I mean, everything's a risk, mm-hmm. right? Everything is a risk. And, and I, I would buy in Mexico, mm-hmm. right? I wouldn't but like you said, happen. the U.S. is better. There's more laws here. There's more structure. So right. higher chance of you at least keeping. Yeah. I mean, uh, I like I've watched YouTube videos of this, of just people like uh, mm-hmm. go to the Philippines and buy land over there oh. for very very cheap and they just build their home and it's like they start their life out there which is pretty it's pretty awesome to see you know just someone else living in a different country and adapting to that but i i look at it from the perspective of like damn okay like they have their house over there they're still making u.s dollars like they're ballers out there oh yeah like, yeah, like yeah they freaking build these beautiful that, homes by the beach is that a dream you have you want to do that? yeah i definitely do man uh i would like to either mexico um, somewhere that I like by by the beach or shoot even Honduras, man. Somewhere so, out there. I know somebody out there by the beach. A realtor yeah. out there. Just because I I know like it's very inexpensive. Like a hundred grand of will get you a freaking. You know what's ass. funny? Not to go off on a tangent on this, but just I just came from Honduras like three weeks ago. I saw you know my dad and all that, and we're talking about land. We're talking about houses, and there's always there's always family feud going on. Right. You know mm-hmm. with with property and stuff, and on on exactly what we're talking about. <clears throat> what she mentioned as far as like cartels, that's a big issue out there. So in Honduras, like businesses, I think we talked about it too a little bit. Really, like a lot of third world countries is if you have a business, 
and there's gangs around, which there usually is, they're going to want a certain percentage. Tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, that's something I think you see. Like, yeah, it might be cheaper in, like, a third world country. But you, might be easier, right. but you have to deal with all that. Not just that. I met, I have a friend who, um, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep them nameless, but her father was murdered because uh, they owned a property. They owned a property. They didn't want to pay a certain tax. Mm -hmm. uh, MS came in. Killed him. Bola. Oh, no. So, you know, it's like, is it worth it at the end of the day? I mean, it, it depends, <laughs> I guess, the area and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's something, like you said, we don't have to worry about. Like, yeah, we might fucking be taxed up our butts here, but we don't have to worry about fucking the cartel coming in and doing some yeah. shit. So and it all that, has its pros. that's not a joke either. You know, that's yeah. something that's real. Yeah, no, it is real. It, ha and it all has its pros and cons. And, you know, to, to elaborate on that, the fact that it is cheaper. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. Um, I'm starting to see, though, for example, where my mom's from. Mm -hmm. She's from this small town. Um, it's just from the small pueblo, mm -hmm. right? The closest mm -hmm. neighboring city is, is Chapala. Okay, right? I know exactly. Chapala? Yeah. Big lake. I've the been lake, there. yes. Mm -hmm. The closest neighboring city is Chapala. And um, there's this, closer to that, there's this place called, um, oh, gosh. She's going to kill me because I can't remember the name Masa right Migla. now. Uh, no. I can't help you. I don't know. No, it's uh, where all the Caucasians live. Oh, oh, they, 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 they call it they call it gringo gringo i know exactly where you're talking about gringoville they call it gringoville no, and i'm no gonna joke. text my yes. woman yeah <laughs> they, they call it like gringo town or yeah. gringo city so you've got a mm -hmm. century 21 there yeah, yeah. right and um and these properties are going for like 500 600 some of them go for yeah. a lot more ahi -hi. Ah, he, he. Yeah, ah, yeah. He, he. I know of it yeah. because my sister's friend, mom, actually owns a property there. Oh. Yeah, and they stood there. Beautiful. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> Recently, last year, I went to, um, oh, I'm having another little brain fart, but I went to um, some small town mm -hmm. in Mexico. And um, they had, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that um, Selling, Beverly, Selling Beverly Hills show, but they had an yeah. agency, yeah. right? The uh, the agency is their 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 realtor, their brokerage. Mm -hmm. They have some out there, right? And really? these properties, like the cheapest property, is like nine hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? So it's 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 getting pricey. Mm. So it's not but as cheap as we might think. Yeah, yeah. I hope there's some areas. Still. I hope and pray though that with these properties getting higher in value in these countries like Mexico, I hope more security comes with it. Because I wouldn't, so. I agree, like, I like the idea of living in a foreign country if I can be assured that I'm not going to be killed or my, you know, my head's <laughs> well, not Well, I mean, there, there's areas where it's, it's become private where they actually have, like, security there and all right. that. Um, I know, like, for example, uh, I have an uncle who has a property in <clears> Salvador, <throat> and it's, like, a private community. There's oh. security there and all that. And shout out to El Salvador, though. It's co definitely coming up. Very beautiful. Right. A lot that of things to do. That president's doing some good stuff yeah, for you yeah. guys. Yeah, and I definitely want to travel out there and visit as well yeah but um i wanted to ask you a question so like for example is it, question might be funny as well let's just say uh there's a couple out there that's that's buying a home or how do you feel about them splitting or going like half on a down payment like oh, do you see we, are we getting in there we're getting actually in there. i was yeah it was so just so you know we're at an hour and six seven minutes mm -hmm. oh wow we got like yeah it's been good yeah I like, was going to say, do we keep it real estate or this perfect? No, no, no. Let's segue right. into 50-50 yeah, the topic. Right. Thanks for interrupting yeah. me. Take, 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 <laughs> it, take so, it away. Take it away. So, like, uh, I'm sure you see this, uh, but, but w what's your personal opinion on that? Like, do you feel a couple should be going 50-50 on a down payment, or do you feel that they should be going in 100% at this point? They should. Are they married? Uh, let's just say, let's say married. Let's okay. say engaged. I don't know. Both. I have an opinion too. Mm -hmm. Go right. ahead. So, um, Ladies first. You know, I think that when it comes down to mortgages, right? Uh -huh. And uh, people want to play it safe just in case for the just in case or what? Right. I mean, it's hard. I feel like if you you have someone that you that you you know see a future with, and you guys are willing to make that mm -hmm. investment, um, you know, I I feel like right now it's really tough for one person to afford it alone. One hundred percent. Right. So with the mortgage, mm -hmm. I think it's okay if you guys agree on like let's do a fifty fifty. Let's all put let's both put all our savings into it, right? Because it's it's for the better of the right, relationship, right. right? It's to provide hopefully a better future for your children. Mm -hmm. So I would say by all means. But if we're talking about like a first date or uh -huh. something, uh -huh. yeah, then no, no, that should not <laughs> be split. A mortgage, it's okay. I'll yeah, let yeah. you split that. Uh -huh. But if we're talking about like a first date dinner uh -huh. or lunch. Wait, so, okay, so, so just to be clear, like if you um 
let's say uh, you let hypothetical. Okay. Okay, but you and your you and your man. Okay. You guys get a mortgage. Mortgage is five G's a month. Yeah, we're right. doing good here. Mm-hmm. Um, you're you're okay with splitting that? Right. You're okay with hey, twenty five hundred, me twenty five hundred. That's cool with you. Um, you know what? I probably. That's wouldn't. actually a good question because I think it, it, your your question is more clear. The yeah, mortgage I mean, payment is what he's referring to. I was referring more to like the down payment, gotcha. which I think you said, yeah, you know, because of the future, you guys are better. But the mortgage payment there. Right. You know, I just, I feel, feel some type of like way about like. Let it out, girl. Let me send let you the out. half of my rent, right? Mm-hmm. Or my mortgage. Like, that mm-hmm. just doesn't sit right. Do you feel at that it point they should right. be moving in? It doesn't like, sit right. Moving together? I feel like at that point it's like we should maybe have some type of agreement where it's like maybe the maybe one person covers the mortgage. Hopefully, you know, the, mm-hmm. I feel like the man should handle most of the okay. expense, yeah. right? Yeah. Or at least the large, l- the large sum, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, let's say for example, the man covers the mortgage, right? Mm-hmm. And then the woman could pay for maybe you know the, uh, some of the other bills. Mm-hmm. Um, I have so many questions. Right yeah, there. and, yeah, and, 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 and um, I uh-huh. hope my dad doesn't watch this because he's gonna flip, right? Because uh-huh. I come from a very traditional household, uh-huh. right, where it's like my father was the provider, my mom was the homemaker. Right, right. Right? Mija, no diga eso. <laughs> Consigue un hombre que va a pagar todo. All right, uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah. Translation: Dad is yelling at her, saying, "Girl, don't say <laughs> that. Find you a man that's right. gonna pay it all." <laughs> so, so let me ask you this, though. Right. Okay, so I have so many questions. I'm, I'm glad okay. we touched on this. What if the woman makes more than the man? The woman, makes which more nowadays, than the man. Is, which nowadays is, is uh, it's, more it's common. Yeah. It's more normal. Yeah. So Shorty makes three hundred thousand. Man makes half of that, one fifty. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you know that that's tough. Uh-huh. That that is. Tough. <laughs> she ain't bending. She's yeah, like, oh, she well, said. that's a cute story. Man <laughs> still gotta pay. Not, not my type of man. No, like, that's fair. That's uh-huh. fair. Okay. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, but to so eat. it's interesting though because you said like, all right, man handles the mortgage payment, right. but you handle bills and all that. What if at the end of the day, it still tallies up to like he's paying five thousand and you're still paying five thousand. Couldn't you just divide it? But maybe it's just for the sake of yeah. in your head. Well, like, you know, like if you're married, maybe like all the money goes into one account. Right. That's, right? How, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how I'm envisioning yeah. it. All know? the money goes into one account. Marriage and, and home payment. Yeah, that's a very right. specific. Okay, but dates. We right. Let's yeah. switch over to dates. So, so okay, so let, let me give you a scenario here. Let's just say you go on a date. It's a, it's a nice restaurant. Guy has a great personality. Okay. But when it comes to the bill, he says, hey, you know what? I had a great time. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we split the check? Well, what's your reaction there? Oh, so his personality is not that great then, right? <laughs> what if he made you laugh? What, what, what if he made oh, you laugh? Oh, you know? So the but personality. We're going to be great friends. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're going to be great friends. No. Okay, but, but, yeah, but, yeah. but are you letting them know? Like, hey, the, you know. No. We're, okay, you're just, no. you, you'll pay your, your half and that's it. That's the well, end of it. this is the thing, right? Mm-hmm. So what I do, uh-huh. and, 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 and I'm not dating right now, but what I've uh-huh. done, right? Uh-huh. It's like, if, if I'm on a date with someone. Uh-huh. Like I do this this whole test, right? Where it's like you Bill comes, through. I put my card down, right? Mm-hmm. It's like I'm not gonna expect you to pay, okay. right? So I that's put the, my that's card the down. That's independent of you, uh-huh. independent. But you no, know, that's her strategy. If she he lets to. me pay, mm-hmm. it's a, that's it's the last right. time we see each other, uh, right? Okay, okay. He lets me pay. That's the last time we see each other because uh-huh. I'm gonna be honest with you, like. I mean, just that that's the way I am. Like, let's say I'm having a dinner with an older person, <laughs> right? With like, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, with my, my client's mom. I'm You're going to pay the I'm bill. I'm going to pay, yeah. right? Yeah, 100%, right. 100%. So it's just like, that's the least uh-huh. you can do. At, you know, you yeah. can pay the bill, right? So yeah, I'll test. I'll put my card, right? Mm-hmm. But then if he doesn't remove my card. Do you really do that? I do. Yeah, so you've just, been. She's telling us the strategy. I, I know, but but I didn't know if she was being honest. Like you actually like go on dates and you put your card down first. No, and then not like I won't be so quick to it, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like we're talking, right? The bill comes and then like I'll reach in my purse or whatever. And how many in your study here, <laughs> how many men have. Didn't pass that test. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it's not We're not like going to name them, but. I'm, you know, you know, I have so much data, right? I don't <laughs> date too much. From your sample size From my here. sample, what right? What percentage? It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's probably, it's rare. It's uh-huh. rare. So what do you think of, um. How and, you, oh, go, go for it. And we're just exploring your mind, right? Oh, like, 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 like we're guys, yeah. we're obviously on the, yeah. we're in two different worlds, women right. and men. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. What do you think of women that are okay with that? Splitting mm. the bill? Yeah. I mean, you know, to eat to each their own, yep. right? To each their own. But personally, I just feel like you have a younger sister, right? I do. Okay, your younger sister is okay with splitting the bill. What are you telling her? My younger sister is not okay with splitting the bill. I know, She's much let, more let's traditional let's than just, me. Let's okay, just say yeah, but yeah. Let's yeah. hypothetically, yeah. hypothetically, yeah. Hypothetically. What what advice will you give her, or what will you tell her? You know, I just I'd, I'd be like, well, 
why are you doing that, right? <laughs> why are you doing that? Like, this is the first date. This mm-hmm. is where he's, you know, putting his best foot forward. Right, This right. is the least he can do is, I mean, mind you, like, where are you going to dinner that you have mm-hmm. to split the bill? Mm-hmm. That was going to be my next question. Right. Um, does it matter to you where you're taken? Wasn't this a whole controversy last year where it's like the restaurants that he should not take you to? And I think BJ's was on there. And all Cheesecake that. I mean, Factory. Right? Yeah, yeah, Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I didn't see that, but no, nah, that wouldn't be a good first date. What did Drake Fellas, say? do not take a woman to BJ's or Chocolate Factory. I've never even been there. Uh, Cheesecake I, Factory. I, no, Cheesecake I, Factory. I, I've, I've never fellas, been there. Fellas, if that's the best you can do... Take her to where you can. I I'm gonna disagree with okay. my partner here. BJ's they have a fire pazuki. <laughs> See, I, um, oh yeah, the pazukis are. They're known good. for their pizza, whatever. I used to I used to go there. I mean, do I go there now? No, but mm-hmm. but but it's it's like you said, to each their own. It's all subjective. Some people yeah. don't have money. Some people do, and if BJ's is the best they can do in this short, he's fine with it. Hey, they had a great time. I'm right. I'm all for that. But to you That's though, right. like. You know, if you're taken to, I guess, yeah, if you're taken to BJ's, are you, are you going? Are you showing up? You know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, man, I, I, just, I, it comes uh, down sorry, to I saw I this just, restaurant in Yelp. It has great reviews. <laughs> oh, she said, I'm just tired. I'm just not <laughs> feeling you know, it. it. No, it's been a long to, day. A lot of. It comes down to effort, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Right. It comes down to effort. And it's like, all right, if I, if I, if I know this person is. Mm. You know, on on TikTok, they're coming, they're getting flooded with information, right? Uh-huh. They're probably, there's this cute little, like, boutique place that we can go to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, Context. Yeah, a lot of chain mm-hmm. restaurants on a first date, it's mm-hmm. like, maybe, you know, not. Look, but, I'm, I'm going to say this, sorry to cut you off, but I've never taken a girl to BJ's. No, I've never been to Cheesecake Factory at all. But I feel like if you if you're gonna take a girl, take her somewhere nice. It it, it could be a mom and pop restaurant. Right. But if there's something unique about it, mm-hmm. that the food is good and there's like a good environment there, I recommend it. Mm-hmm. There's a nice restaurant in uh, <laughs> damn man, I forgot. Uh, it's like Lincoln Heights, I believe it is, or uh, is it? Yeah, Lincoln Heights. It's just like an Italian Mexican <laughs> restaurant. That's great. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. check it out. So check it out. The owners. He's Italian. The wife is Mexicana. They ah. they combine it. Their you know their their um, cuisine. Yeah, their cuisine. It's, and it's like it's a small restaurant, but it's cute. It's nice. Right. You, you, it's intimate. You could talk right. to this person, and the food, by the way, is really great. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 within budget, guys. You'll probably spend like a hundred dollars, hundred fifty. Because that's the thing. Cheesecake Factory is not expensive. Not it's not, not cheap, cheap. I'm yeah. sorry. Cheesecake Factory is not cheap. I just think there's so much going on there and yeah the the floors are slippery you know yeah i hear y'all fellas go where you must i'm i'm just i'm just saying like 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 look a a dude like let's be honest you're not gonna choose a dude well i don't know look no hold on hold on let me finish my point like okay Mm -hmm. as as a man but even as a woman like this whole thing of falling in love and choosing your partner are we really gonna like he took me to cheesecake like Personally, I just think that's a little bit shallow, and I think that's just like you don't know this person's situation. What if this is the mm-hmm. best they can do? What if right. they're so busy working they don't have a lot of time to go on Yelp and look up this little cute little? No, this is like you know what? He's a hardworking man. I like this girl. I'm gonna take you here. I maybe he's he's never been a cheese. Maybe they've never been a cheesecake, and it looks cheesecake look I, cheesecake factory looks great from the outside right it's like and it's as fancy on the inside whatever it's never i know i've been there twice i'm not saying i go there but i'm i'm just saying like i think there has to be more understanding so i i don't know i don't think it's that, fair that's fair i i get what you're saying it's fair and look I, i'm gonna retract here it, and i i like that you said it it's it's about the effort you yeah know, exactly yeah i think that's mm-hmm. a so, better so measurement uh, and i'm gonna share this right here so I have a girlfriend, okay. and, and I talked to her about, um, for I, I, I've always told her, I feel like this day was a defining moment for you and I, like where we're at today. So it was during COVID time. Yeah. Um, we, had a, we had a hangout set up for 7 p.m. I told her I was going to pick her up. Everything shuts down. All these restaurants are shut down because of COVID, right? Right. So she was already texting me like, hey, it looks like it's going to be a no-go. Everything's closed. And I told her, I'm a, I told, don't worry about it. Be ready by seven. So what I did was, and this is the effort part that I'm talking about. It's not about the money. It's not about this. What I did, I went to Food for Less. I bought mm-hmm. a bottle of wine. There I went go. to the, I went to Domino's Pizza. Bought a freaking pizza like was like what seven bucks, eight bucks. Mm-hmm. I took her to a local park. 
I was going to say that. And we we drank wine and we ate yeah, pizza. There you go. You and, bought a nine dollar pizza mm-hmm. that is way cheaper than Cheesecake Factory, but exactly, right. it's your intention. Your it's love, the intention. Your effort. It's, 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 it's the thought. It's the yes. effort, right? And when I went, when we went to the park, it was probably one of the best. And, and I, the reason why I said it was a defining moment because that's where her and I really bonded. Mm-hmm. We got to know each other more on a personal level Definitely. instead of this, you know, front that we put and all this. Right. And to this day, she remembers that, and she's the one that tells me, like, you know, that day is the day where. We really bonded and connected. Well, you showed her how far you're willing to go is what happened. Like yeah, she so saw your, sometimes your it's not about the restaurant. It's about the effort that you put in. And it could be just, it could be something that small, like a pizza and a wine, a bottle of wine, take her to the beach, Little and just Caesars, really connect with breadsticks. them. Right? There was those breadsticks. Hey, they slap. <laughs> they're oh, they're nice so thing. good. I don't know if they're still good, but they were back. They they're probably better now. Like, 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 they're I'm probably be better real. now. Yeah. You know how they get with their food. They're making what, it better. Caesar? Yeah. I don't like Little Caesars. Just because... No, I don't mess with those. Just Caesars, because man. when I was broke as fuck, that's how we ate. Amen. Fucking the box <laughs> pizza. And no, but I completely agree with you, Vic. And and I think Cheesecake paid Marlon. Pizza. You know, Cheesecake's yeah, he's selling here, you too. Because you're, I hope you're so. they promoting should. for them a whole lot. No, I'm just... I'm <laughs> fighting for the average man. I'm fighting yeah. for the hardworking man and women too that like, you know, I don't know, like looks is big for women, right? Like... Maybe they don't come looking. I don't know. Like, you obviously look very nice. You're very professional. But on a first date, like, maybe that woman is maybe not looking her best. I don't know. But stuff happens. Mm, like, like That's interesting. What What is? Yeah, that's true. You know, like. Right, because for men, we're viewed on money. Oh, is he going to pay? And it's right. like, well, for women, is like, did you do your makeup? Did you do your hair? Did you just. So and look. maybe you didn't have enough time, but you still showed up. It's like, so what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. This shorty didn't do her hair. Skirt. Next, like, yeah. I just don't think that's point. fair. We're people, right? That's like, a really good point. We're running, I never thought, we thought run about late it that sometimes. Way. So, like, look, gotcha, man. <laughs> <laughs> on the note, um, so what, you know, when I when I would take a, a woman out to eat and stuff like that, I already knew I was already going with the intention that I'm gonna pay regardless whether right. it was a successful date or not. I'm paying. That's just mm-hmm. me. That's just who I am. But I do look into to see if the woman at least makes an effort. To say, oh no, like I'll take care of it because I already know I'm gonna overcome the objection. But I like, no, no, it's all good. I got it. I'm gonna take this one's on me, etc. Right. But there's some girls that just, and this is what I don't like, would just sit there and just like, they see the bill. So, but they're just like, okay, you don't like, pay? yeah, like okay, like I'm not gonna pay or you like know, I'm just. Yeah. But if I see a girl kind of reach into their, you know, I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. That tells me that she doesn't need a man. Yeah, she's only getting like, her she's not, when she or she's not, she, she's not uh, on this day because, you know, she wants to uh, benefit from this or something like that. Yeah. So I like that when a woman at least makes a little effort, like, oh, no, like, it's cool. Like, I got, no, 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 it's all good. Like, I'm, I'm going to take care of this. This is on me. Blah, blah, blah. What, what were you going to say? Matt, and you know what? And not to put anyone down, right? But it's like if a man, if you need to split the bill right out of need, right? Where <laughs> it's like, shit, I don't have enough money. Maybe he maybe focus didn't. on yourself. Yeah, don't go you know, on a date. Don't be dating right now. That shouldn't but, be your and main. And for focus. the record, for the record, I'm fighting for the average man, but I do agree with that. Mm-hmm. I do agree. I'm very traditional myself, and I I believe in the Bible, and the Bible says the man is the head of the household. Like the man right. leads. The man right. should be the one like handling most things. And there's really good things that men are good at, and really good things that women are good at. Mm-hmm. And I think in this particular context of like pain. Um, I do agree that a man should pay, mm-hmm. but I do, I have, um, I know some close friends of mine that don't do that all the time. They split the bill and it's very interesting to get different perspectives on that. Um, but yeah, for you, it's very clear. Like man has to pay. And yeah. Is there a minimum budget? Like maybe like, <laughs> on the first date? yeah, when you go, no, 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 no you'll no, be surprised. You'll be surprised. The whole thing, uh-huh. Right. Where it's like, you know, the I'm going to be honest. If he takes me to a restaurant and we got to wait two hours, I'm going to be like, oh my. Gosh, right? Should just took me to In and Out. I love In and Out. <laughs> yeah, if you took me to In and Out on the is. first day, fellas, you're welcome. probably double, getting married. Double, you know, double, yeah. Double, animal you fries, know? get her everything. <laughs> <laughs> give, give her the strawberry milkshake too. There we go. <laughs> no, but you know, and and it's so much simpler. Where it's like maybe he puts together like a picnic, right? Mm-hmm. Like you it's did. It's a little thing. Yeah, yeah, like you did, and it's, it's like the effort, the hey, time. you know, mm-hmm. we got so we picked up Subway on the way, and mm-hmm. you know, he put it together. So yeah, it's the effort. But no, is there a minimum budget? No. Yeah. Of course, you know, they say don't go out on coffee dates, right? Because that's low effort. 
Really? I, I, really? This is the first time I hear this. Yeah, they say don't that's go the out on coffee time. dates, so don't accept coffee dates. Who's I they? Know. Like the the girls at the Vita the girls brokerage? On Instagram. Oh, yeah. Okay. At yeah. the Vita brokerage, I'm actually the only girl at Vita brokerage. They trip, and yeah. I, I think I think coffee dates are good if you're really interested in the person and you're trying to get to know them yeah. more, like intimately. I think you can have good conversations. Well, you know, I I remember that uh, a friend of mine, mm-hmm. his friend used to only go on coffee dates because he was just dating so much, right? Oh. So he was like, I need to filter this person. Next, next. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. So he's like, if we go on a coffee date and I'm bored out of my mind, I'm not going to waste money on taking her to dinner. That's smart. That's a filtering mm. process. You know? So, that, that is, and then it's and, and the here's, woman here's, she or not. Right, right, right. And here's why I would say that's smart because, all right, in today's world with so many dating sites, with Instagram, with fucking TikTok that was just banned, um everything right okay when you meet somebody through there first you only you're you're texting right right? and then you're sure you're gonna vibe oh cool we're laughing cool but it's a whole i think i think we can all agree that it's a whole different ball game when you meet in person Mm -hmm. right it's like oh shit okay maybe because then you learn Mm -hmm. the vibe the the mannerisms the personality Mm -hmm. So I, I think morals. he's on to something. I think yeah. the coffee dates, maybe as a I starter, will, hey, you know what? Coffee date was great. Let's have dinner, you know, later tonight or tomorrow. I think. So, look, I, I would yeah. I would do yeah. coffee dates or whatever you want to put it. I wouldn't consider it dates, but I would always a, like a, to a, meet a, up a, before. A, a, a checkpoint. A check, <laughs> coffee checkpoint. Nah, because for me, conversation's always been big. If we could hold a conversation, then, mm-hmm. okay, th- I see something here. Like Right. You know, but there's there's girls that can't hold a conversation that all they bring is just their beauty. And but to me, the beauty is not enough. You know, right. can we talk? Can we vibe? Can you make me laugh? Can I make you laugh? All right. If all those things check out, then hell yeah, let's hang out again. Let's go do something fun. Let's go. Uh, I don't know. Freaking arcade like those those adult ar- arcades where you right. can drink or play pool, things like that. And then dinner, you know, but yeah, I, I have a question for you. Um. So since we're talking about like pain and money and 50-50, so finances and how much a man makes yearly, mm-hmm. is that a big deal for you? Is that something that you'd like to know maybe before it gets serious? serious? Or do they have to be a homeowner? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's funny. No. Well, what are the they boxes? don't own a home, that's better because then right. I can get them in one. Hey, so, so there you go. You can sell them. <laughs> so hold on. To, to answer your question here, for, for you fellas that you know might be interested that's here, funny. what oh, are the boxes gosh. that they that need to check for you? That's funny. No, that's not what it is at all, right? Okay. Well, you know, for your female viewers, right, to uh-huh. see if we had the same uh, thought process. No, it's process. both. It's both. You never know who's watching. Yeah. Gosh. You never know who's watching. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. I've never been marketed this way, but <laughs> let's see. Um, you know, I think, for that, I think that income, and especially at the age, right, where it's like we're, we're kind of late 20s. Okay. It, you sometimes we underestimate, underestimate how many people are still really figuring it out, yep. right? Mm-hmm. So of course, yeah, sooner or later income's gonna come up, mm-hmm. but I'm more so of the fact where it's like I'm holding a conversation with someone mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, what are your goals? What are your aspirations? Vision. Right? Like, are you? Because it's one thing to be broke in your wallet, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe your financials aren't lining up yet, but are you broken the mind? Mm-hmm. Right. That's key. That's key. Yeah. Talk about. Listen it. up. Listen right. up. Talk about so it. So it's like maybe you know you're 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 transitioning mm-hmm. right and maybe like right now you're not making right, that right. the 150k or whatever is needed to sustain a household yeah. right but you have aspiration mm-hmm. to right and you're just like this and this is what i'm doing i you're have good a for plan. you you're good for you guys right? mm-hmm. good for you so that's what i think right? i say that because especially in la not all women but mm-hmm. there's some women that yeah if you ain't got it to get and and mind you teach their own it depends maybe that woman can be older and she doesn't have that much time to wait for a man to figure it out so it's all subjective mm-hmm. but i think um i think that's an excellent perspective right. because right. it's it's life we're all still trying to mm-hmm. figure it out we're all grinding exactly we're all growing and stuff happens mm-hmm. you know stuff happens uh, exactly. setbacks happen unfortunately sometimes you know people Recessions lose loved ones, you know mm-hmm. yep. and that could cause a toll um but yeah it's like okay well you know what do you spend your time on right you know what's Are you in investing your mind? in yourself and your exactly. mindset your yeah. vision your goals things like that yeah mm-hmm. on that note um one of the things i wrote down that i'd want to ask you yadith um i mean so far you've come you've come off as like a very knowledgeable person obviously with real estate but you're very considerate mm-hmm. And intelligent and more than one, you know, not, not just the real estate, but even just pr- your perspective with life. But what do you do to improve yourself? Like, what are you, Any, are you a big reader? Books? 
or audio? Are you a uh, conference yeah. kind of? Yeah. All of the above? You know, it comes down to, mm-hmm. for, for example, like what's really contributed to my growth lately mm-hmm. has been the people I've surrounded myself okay. with, right? So it's like my team, mm-hmm. right? The whole. Real estate, Vita? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to you them. You guys are all moving in the same direction, same mindset. Right. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're doing the challenge together, the mm-hmm. 75 hard challenge. And, you know, similar to you guys, like you guys worked together. And then mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Like, let's start a podcast together, mm-hmm. right? So it's. Oh, it's she has been watching. It's mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Where it's like, um, so it, it's a lot of what keeps me grounded and keeps me focused is the people I surround myself with, Which right? The accountability partners, right? And what I mean, I personally have to do for myself to keep sane because it gets hectic, mm-hmm. right? It gets hectic. Real estate transactions aren't always easy going, right? right? And You're dealing with people, emotions, all exactly, that. Exactly, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, for me constantly, it's like I routinely have to work out. Right. So whether it be going to the Clear gym, whether it be running, you know, why do you have to, you know, that's something that I adapted really early on. Like I started going to the gym with my, my father when I was like 14. Mm. Right. Well, so that's your dad. dad's in shape. Yeah. That's cool. You know, yeah, he's, a okay. he, he's always taking the gym seriously. Right. So, so I tell him, I was like, let's, you know, let's, I think my dad's heard that. Or something. Like, <laughs> my dad's like fit too. He goes to the gym every day, holds me accountable to go to the gym. Really? He lost his house. <laughs> I don't think we're related. No, related. My dad's from Samora. That's funny. Imagine we have the same dad. My dad's name is Victor, actually. No, no I'm serious. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Victor, yeah. Yareth. Uh, dad, listen, I didn't do you have that, another daughter you didn't you tell me about? Are, this is your Yeah, no, my dad's name is Victor. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, but you know. Uh, anyways. <laughs> going, back to, going back to our dad. Uh-huh. Yeah, so he, you know, early on, he was just, that, that was his coping mechanism mm-hmm. when he mm-hmm. was going through potentially losing the house, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there came to a get point. distracted. Yeah, there it. came a point where he was just like, well, you know, of course he hit that 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 pothole where he was just like coming home, kind of watching TV, right, and just like trying to like think like, what am I gonna do to save this, right? And then after a moment, he's just like, let me get in the gym, and you know, the gym does incredible things for you as far as like y- getting your creative juices flowing, mm-hmm. you know, and and it helps you think clear. Like mm-hmm. there's times where like I'm just feeling you know, done. Like, my brain is fried. Right. I'm like, I, I can't. Mm-hmm. I got, sometimes people are like, yo, we need to decide on this. I'm like, let me go to, let me go for a run. <laughs> let me go for a run, <laughs> then I'll come mind. back, and That's then funny. I can, I can move forward on Think this, clearly, right? see better. Exactly. I feel like you're able to analyze things a lot clearer. Like, exactly. okay, may, okay, this. Men this, have that yeah. too. It's called, uh, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Here you go. Post, post. It's called post-nut clarity. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, proud moment for you. Yeah, That's so funny. you're able to analyze things. Like, okay, maybe yeah. this situation went sour because of this. Maybe I said this wrong. Yeah. You start thinking more clear and of like, course. okay, now I know how I want to approach this. You know, after the gym, after I take a shower, I'll make this phone call. Right. Things like that, which yeah. is good. And, um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it does incredible things. I'm sorry, yeah, you were I, yeah I, was, I have a question for you. Is there a book or what book helped you, um, you know, start, I don't know, uh, gaining more better people skills? Things, right. things in that nature. You know, a while ago I read. Um, oh, what's rich- a book that changed? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. The Richest Man in, ba- in Babylon. I, I read it. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I think that that book really did kind of like kind of s- switch my mindset. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I've always been very open to like, mm-hmm. you know, finance and, and, and risk taking because of my father. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, he was in that situation with the He's home. He's a big influence for of you. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what does he do, by the way? He if you don't mind does. Me asking. Um, so he he has a clothing company. That's right. That's yeah. right. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So he does that. I don't have that. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. So it's not, not the same, same dad. Yeah. 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 But yeah. So and and I think that was one of the books that really transitioned my uh-huh. mindset and like opened my eyes to different things. And I was like, wow, you know. And then of course everyone talks about rich dad, poor dad. Of right? course, yeah. of course. Yeah, that's another classic. Um, and and I'm big on movies. Honestly, mm. like I learned Me a too. lot. Me too. From yeah. movies. Yeah. Right? I relate things a lot back to the yeah, movies. Yeah. And, and my favorite type of movies are like mafia, mobster. Okay. Yeah. 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 Same, oh, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. God- Godfather. 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 Of course. Um, Goodfellas. Yes. Uh, the Irishman on Netflix. Check What's that one that out as well. other one? Oh, Jesus. It's kind of like a, a love story. Is give it with the guy an, from the give Notebook? Give us an actor. Give us something. We'll Gangsters. Um, Is it the guy from Notebook? He comes no. out. Hold on. Letter, letter. Um, it's it's the guy who Johnny Depp. Um, it, I mean, it's all the same actors in all the mafia movies. Mm-hmm. You know, is it's it a classic? Like older? It's a classic. What's yeah. the story? Can you? 
The story is about a young boy. He has his father, right? And um, he likes just becomes infatuated with the neighborhood uh, mobster, right? And then the mobster kind of like takes him under his wing and he's just like, he like encourages his mindset. It's the one the where... The Departed? No, no, no. No, no it's, it's, it's an older one. It's the one where the the guy, the mobster tells him like, if she doesn't reach over to open your door, she's not the one. Mm. And then she like reaches and then he goes on a date with this girl mm. that he really likes. And then she reaches over to open his door. And it's like that was like the ceiling. No, yeah, clue. it's going to come no back idea. to me. And I'm yeah, gonna we'll, so we'll, we'll pinpoint it. Yeah, um, I do. I do enjoy mobster movies because I feel like there's a lot to learn there. Like these guys are very, very smart. They're not yes. where they're at for no reason. They're, 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 they don't, they're, they're they don't get away. Men. Yeah, mm-hmm. they don't get away with the shit that they get away with not being mm-hmm. say strategic. It. You found it. A Bronx, Bronx tale. tale. There, there you go. Yes. Yes, there that's you right, go. That's why we hired him. Yeah. Watch this shit tonight. And Bronx you know, and, and that's one of those where I'm just like, you get all these little life. I lessons. haven't seen yeah. that actually. Yeah, oh, no. you gotta watch it. Okay, you gotta watch it. It's no, so it's watch. actually yes. funny because outside of movies, I watch a lot of mobster interviews. Like oh, yeah. there's this guy named Michael Francesi. Oh. Uh, so he he had one of the biggest um, schemes out there in the gas in the gas industry, and he was racking in millions, millions that. a day. Mm. And now he has his own YouTube channel. He's co- he's came out a lot with a uh, Pat- Patrick B. David. Uh, but I like studying Sammy the Bull as well. You know, he he was also smart, but he was more vicious. Like this guy got convicted for nineteen murders, but yet he's still alive today. Uh, he 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 you know didn't get killed. So um, I like to study their mindset. I like uh, um, what's the name um, that. Uh, Vlad TV, he interviews a lot of these people, like right. these drug traffickers, mm-hmm. because to me, it's fascinating how it is that you got away for so long from the from the feds, from all this running this illegal scheme. So I like to learn from them. I like to take the good <laughs> from the We're Victor. We're here advising people and saying we like to learn from them. <laughs> no, but of course. The well, good. the truth like, is, like, Victor, the Victor has an illegal scheme going on, <laughs> and he's trying to learn how to get out of it. <laughs> That's what's going on. No, that's um, true. Wow. Well, I, yeah. I hate I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yeah. we are reaching our time limit oh, here, yeah, just yes. due to editing purposes. Mm-hmm. And um, before we close out, Yadeth, you've said a lot of great things. Is there mm-hmm. anything that you wanna? One last thing, maybe. Shoot, I mean, you know, I think it was a great conversation, yeah. guys. Yeah. Like well, 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 let me help you out here. If there's yeah. anybody that's looking to get in the real estate industry, right. what's an advice you could give him? If there's somebody that. Um, you know, wants to buy a property, just name one advice that you could give them. My Contact you. advice would be, yeah. of course, right. Yeah. Contact me, right? No, any way I can help, right? Of course, if, if we're not the right fit for each other because you live far away, I'll be the first to, you know, advise you and gear you the right way. But I would say, you know, take the risk. Mm-hmm. Take the risk. Obviously, calculated risk, right? But a lot of time we get stuck in this whole analysis paralysis mm-hmm. and we don't do anything, mm. right? Right. And in the meantime, five years, 10 years passed by and that property value just kept going up and we missed out, mm-hmm. right? So it's just, it just buy. Sometimes, you know, we're looking for that perfect property and we're just like, I'm going to buy when it has this, this and that. But the point is to get into something, right? And start building. Slowly you can yeah. turn it into start that. Start building journal. your portfolio. And also yeah. let it build equity. Yep. Of course, yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, that would be, you know, my biggest advice to anyone looking about looking to get into real estate. And, I mean, it's truly real estate is bulletproof. you got to take the calculated risk, right, and it, get informed, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, count your resources, count on your resources, and do your homework, too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because that's it, it, it could be a life-changing experience. I mean, here we are. 2008 was what was that 16 years ago 16 years ago you know and it's like it directly affected us Mm -hmm. it directly affected who we are as people right Mm -hmm. and and obviously our parents right Mm -hmm. so it's it's Mm -hmm. a generational thing that's a good point yeah all right yeah thank you so much we appreciate your knowledge your time we had good laughs Uh, the last thing i do want to say for if you watched this episode all the way to the to the end here make sure to like subscribe Drop a comment out there, whether it's positive, negative. Give us some feedback. Maybe things that you guys would like to listen to or hear us talk about more. You know, we'll, we're more than happy to respond to that comment and take your comment to consideration. And we will plug in her Instagram as well. So, yeah, anybody that seriously just wants to, you know, learn anything, I'm sure you're okay with them contacting you. Oh, absolutely, you. yes. Yeah, so we'll put that there. But thank you once again. We thank appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Time. Thank yeah. you so much, thank guys. You. Thank you. Peace out, guys.